guys, welcome back to my Thursday channel, Home Decor and More. Today we're doing a Christmas in July and I'm gonna show you my technique for making these birch logs. I have seen these all over Pinterest, but I played with some techniques and I came up with a super quick and easy way to make these look pretty realistic. And then we're gonna turn them all into a Christmas tree. So if you wanna know how to make them, stick around. i show you how. Okay, so you're gonna need three pool noodles. I kind of laid out a design on my Christmas tree to see where I wanted them, and I'm gonna cut eight pieces, and I'm gonna um, stair them down three inches each layer. So we're gonna start at like a three inch and end with a 24 inch. So go ahead and cut them out, and then we're gonna go ahead and just wrap them. And I'm just taking the thin craft paper, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna wad it up in a ball, and then open it up and just kind of wad it up in section. Just make sure every bit of it is pretty wrinkled. And then we're going to open it back up and then we're going to roll our noodle into it. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the bottom and I'm just using um, Mod Podge. And then I'm going to put a little bit of glue onto the noodle itself. And you want to make sure that when you're rolling it up, you are rolling it up tight and you are smoothing it out. And don't worry so much whether your line is straight in the back. You'll never see it once we get done painting it. Go ahead and add a little bit more Mod Podge. And you just want to make sure that you get this area sealed off. And I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit more overflowing so I can kind of just smooth that out. And you could wear gloves in this part. I had a lot of glue on my hands when I got done doing this, so I would recommend putting gloves on. Okay, next I'm just going to take the ends and I'm just going to cut it back a little bit till it's about maybe a half inch from the edge or an inch from the edge. And then I'm just going to cut little slits in it. And then I'm going to start gluing that down into the noodle. So you can have two layers. Your first layer, you can go ahead and push down into the noodle. And then you need to put some more Mod Podge on to glue the second layer over it. And it doesn't have to be perfect right here because we are going to cover this up with another end piece here in a minute. And do the same thing for the other end. Okay, then I'm going to take a little ball of um, craft paper too, roll it up and get it wrinkled. Then I'm just going to cut out, they don't even have to be perfect circles, just cut out, you know, a circle. And we're going to glue that to each end of the, of the um, little noodle. And then get the same, do the same thing on the opposite end. Next, just kind of smooth it out a little bit with your hand. And then we're going to start painting it. And I am just using the cottage white paint. It's a chalk paint. I'm using the cottage white. I'm using a gray and a, a light brown. And I'll give you all the links to the ones I use in the description below. You just want to make sure that you do get this completely painted in so you don't see any of the craft paper underneath it or the noodles showing through. And you may want to go back in and do two layers of the white, but you want to be sure and get it completely covered. It's going to make a difference on the way that your birch logs turn out. Okay, next I'm coming in with a paintbrush and I'm just taking the tip of it and just doing some lines around it. And I'm using the Parisian um, gray paint from Folk Art. It's a chalk paint. Just continue to do that till you get however many you want. Just try to kind of randomly put them around. Try not to do, be too uniform on it. And I am dipping my paintbrush into the paint and then I'm dabbing it onto my paper first to unload a little bit of the paint so I don't have it so dark. Just get it really filled in on both sides. I put quite a few of those little lines on mine. Next, I'm just going to take a little sponge and I'm just dabbing it into Fresh Linen by Folk Art. It's a, it's a chalk paint as well. And I am just dabbing it all over this log. Just kind of randomly dabbing it. Don't, don't put too much paint. I am dipping it into my paint then dip, and then pay, putting it on my paper to kind of unload a little bit of the paint. But just kind of get it to, it has like a little um, tan color to the log. And make sure you get it on all, all the sides. Then I'm just going to take my hand and I am just going to smear it in. Just kind of rub it up and down that log just to kind of smear it in. And it'll just give it a little bit of color to it. 
And then I'm going to take some tissue paper and I'm going to make the knots. I'm just going to take some Mod Podge and I'm just going to wrap it up in the tissue paper. Just get it pretty saturated. And then you're going to go ahead and add your knots. Don't make them completely round. Make them different shapes. And just make sure that they are flush with the, with the noodle on all sides. Because you, you want them to stand up a little bit, but you want them to kind of be flush onto it. Just make sure that they're glued down well. And then kind of alternate a little bit. Don't put them straight in a line. Just kind of alternate them a little bit. And then it'll look a lot more realistic. And I'm only going to put um, probably four on this log. I think I put about four on each of the logs that I did, except for the little, little ones. But just make sure that you get that paper pretty saturated. Okay, next I'm going to take some um, paint sticks. They're 12 inches, and I'm going to cut them um, at one at two and a half, five and a half, eight and a half, eleven and a half, and then I'm leaving the other ones at 12 inches. These are going to be what I'm going to put on the back of the noodles to uh, to adhere them to this board. Now this is my long board. It's a one by two, and I'm cutting it at 36 inches. Then I'm taking four of these six inch pieces, and that's what's going to be my leg. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that off, and then I'm going to go cut. If you don't have a power um, power tool to cut with, you can get a miter box. Lowe's and Home Depot sell them, and they're really easy to even just cut by hand. Then I'm going to come back and I'm just going to take some um, white stain, like a, a whitewash stain, and I'm going to stain just, you only have to really just stain one side of these because that's the side that's going to show on the back. If you don't want to use stain, you could just paint them white. And then I'm coming back in on the, the um, part. These are the bases for the stand and the stand. And I'm going to paint these with that same um, Parisian um, gray that I painted the lines on the wood with. I mean, on the, the log with. And you only really need to paint both sides, the top and two sides. You can leave the bottom undone because it's going to be on the floor anyway. You're not going to see it. Okay, next I'm going to take the little sticks that I um, cut with the paint stir sticks. I'm going to find the very center point of them because we are going to draw, we are going to um, drill a little pilot hole in these before we run our screw through it. This will make sure that you don't split your stick. Now I'm using a one and five eighths inch a drywall screw, a coarse thread screw, and I'm going to use a seven sixty fourth drill bit to drill them. Just drill it right through the center of it, all the way through on each one of them. Okay, next I'm going to go ahead and mix up the paint for my little um, knots, and I'm going to use a um, French linen and a Java chalk paint, and I'm going to mix those two together, just a little bit of the brown, and then I'm going to I'm going to mix a little bit of the um, Parisian gray in there, and then some black in there as well. But all of these are going to be chalk paints. You just want to kind of get it to a muddy color. You don't want it too brown. You don't want it too gray. You just kind of want it to be kind of like a grayish color. Okay, then I'm going to use a little sponge and I'm going to start dipping it and, and just kind of dab it onto those little knots. Don't paint these. Just kind of take a sponge and just kind of dab them until you get them, you know, kind of the color you want them to. But just don't overly do them because if you look at a birch, not, uh, birch piece of wood, the knot on it, you'll see it's kind of, it's not really like painted on. It's kind of got a little bit of dots in it too. You don't want them too perfect, otherwise it won't look realistic. Okay, next I'm going to go ahead and mix a little bit of water with the rest of that paint. And I'm going to take my sponge and I'm going to just sponge it on the ends. Not a whole lot, just a little bit, just to kind of give it a little bit of, of gray tone to it. We're going to attach the paint sticks to the back of each one of the um, logs. And you're just going to put a little E6000 glue on each side of the little hole. And then you're going to glue it to the back. Now make sure that you know what which piece you want 
facing forward and make real sure that you get that even on the back because if you need to take some time on this step because you want to make sure that your tree does flow um, flow nice. After I got all my E6000 glue on, I went back and I took a um, tape measure and just measured to make sure and I did have to do a little bit of adjusting but you just want to make sure that you do not, not get in a hurry on this step. And then just keep going until you get them all glued in. Just kind of lay your stick up on, lay on the table and put that on top and you, you can see exactly how that's going to look. Okay, once you get all those glued in, then we're going to come back with a tape measure and just make sure if we have to do any adjusting at all, that you, that you, you need to make sure that that little pilot hole is in the very, very center of that board. And then after you get them exactly where you want them, then we're going to start taking some hot glue and running it down both sides just to hold it in while that E6000 glue dries. Just going to run it down both sides. Just kind of squeeze that um, noodle onto that board and it'll, it'll adhere. It'll be, make it tighter on there too. Okay, next, I'm going to take my one by two that I cut off at 36 inches, and I'm going to start at the top and mark at four and a quarter, and then I'm going to space each little dot out three and three quarters inches apart. And you're going to do that for all for eight different times, ending at 30 and a half. And I'll give you all the measurements in in the description below as well. And I'm marking it so I can drill some pilot holes through it, just like we did the paint sticks. So you're just going to take your drill bit and drill in all eight of those. Okay, next I'm going to take my little pilot um, bit and do a pilot hole through both of the leg and then the long base. And then I started just to screw a screw through there. And you can do this too if you just want to um, drill a screw through there or screw a screw through both legs and the base. But my husband brought out his little countersunk bit and so I used it instead. And what, what that does is just going to make it to where your hole goes down a little bit deeper and your um, screw head will be flush with the wood. You won't, it won't protrude out. So I'm going to go ahead and attach the other leg of the base facing the opposite way and then the, the one I just drilled on top and make sure you just brace it with a piece of wood because you want to make sure that your screw goes through there straight and then just run that screw right through there. Just make sure it's straight. And then turn it over and we're going to do a pilot hole next to that other hole and we're going to um, do a, put a screw through there as well. I'm just going to countersink it first and then I'm going to put my screw through there. Then the other two legs, you're not going to have to put any screws through those at all. Just make sure that you got that lined up really well. And then we're going to go ahead and take some wood glue and attach these other two. So I'm just going to take a popsicle stick and I'm going to put some wood glue on um, the end and then one side. And then I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to clamp them just to hold it in place until they dry. And if you don't have any clamps, don't worry about it. If you just hold it there for a minute, it'll, it'll grab on pretty quick. And then just try not to touch it while it, while it dries. But you don't have to have clamps to do this, this part. And I'm going to tell you ahead of time, I did not show y'all how to attach the logs to the, the base because the camera was off when I did that. But I'm going to kind of just tell you as I, as I show it to you here in a minute exactly what I did. You're just going to take your screws. You're going to screw through the back of that base into each one of those logs. It's pretty easy. Just, just go slow and just put a little bit of wood glue around the hole of that wood before you put that through there. Okay, next I'm just going to put a tree topper on top. I've just got this little star. I got it at a Target um, dollar spot and I got this little wreath that I've had for a while. Just putting it on top and I'm just going to attach that to the very top of my little tree. And I'm going to add it, a little bit of wood glue to it and then a little bit of hot glue to hold it in place until, until it dries. Just kind of figure out exactly where you want it. Make sure it lines up good and then just put a little bit of wood glue on there. 
and then I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue as well just to hold it in place. Next I'm going to take some little garland and some little lights and I'm just going to run it around the garland and then I'm going to wrap it around the, uh, the back pole of the tree and I'll show you here in a minute how all that looks. And I'm just using enough um, garland just to go around just to fill up this light that I have. Okay, then I get it wrapped all the way around the base. I'm going to go ahead and take my hot glue and I'm going to attach the switch for it onto the back part of this tree. Just take a little bit of hot glue and attach your switch so that you don't see it. Okay, this was pretty easy and you can use those logs for a lot of other things too. I just wanted to do a little Christmas tree with it. You know, you can bundle them. You know, I've seen people do them with bundles and put them by the fireplace and stuff like that. Pretty easy. Okay, I hope you liked the video. If you did, be sure and give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see future videos like this, be sure and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it.